Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have a Santa Cruz I want to show you, and this one's finished in the new California sand color. If you guys follow me here on the channel, then you know I've done a few other videos on the Santa Cruz, and today I finally have a new trim level that I have not done a video on, and this is the SEL with activity package. Now for 2023, the Santa Cruz is going to be a carryover vehicle for the most part. Obviously, there were some smaller changes on the SE trim that made more standard safety features, uh, but for most of the other trims, it's going to be a carryover as this vehicle was just introduced last model year. And like I mentioned, the vehicle next to me is a 2023 Santa Cruz SEL activity package, which sits in the middle of the lineup. This is the highest trim you can get with the natural aspirated 2.5 liter with the traditional torque converted eight speed automatic. So that's why I think this is a popular trim level for the Santa Cruz because it adds a several nice features within that activity package. When it comes to changes for the 2023 model year, you can check out a video I have dedicated here on the channel that goes over every trim level of the Santa Cruz that talks about the pricing as well as what change within each trim level. But as far as the SEL activity package goes in specific, the only change that this vehicle had was this exterior color option, which went from Mojave sand to California sand. So that is the only relevant option that changed on this particular vehicle and like I said this color is available on other trim levels as well so the SEL activity package is going to be a carryover for the most part and as far as pricing goes the base price for the SEL activity package only went up $150 which in today's world I think that is a huge win but that brings the base MSRP to $33,855 including destination and all-wheel drive so let's not waste any more time take a look at what this trim level has to offer for just over $34,000 so once again, the Santa Cruz in front of us is finished in the new California sand exterior color with the jet black cloth interior. Now I will give Hyundai props for the color choices within the Santa Cruz's lineup. You have the California sand, the sage gray, the blue stone, and a bunch of other traditional colors as well, uh, which lend itself to being a nice outdoorsy lineup of colors, and I think suits the Santa Cruz quite well. Now when it comes to this color versus the Mojave sand, last year I haven't seen them side by side, so I'm not exactly sure what the differences are. Uh, but they are very similar tan colors and do look very nice, like I said. Up front of the SCL Activity, you will find the same front end as kind of the lower trims. So you have the satin kind of chrome grille with the bright chrome Hyundai emblem, LED daytime ring lights on either side of the grille, halogen projector headlights with incandescent turn signals below them, then your traditional kind of matte plastic that runs across the lower front and rear bumpers and along the side of the vehicle as well. The wheels and tires are going to be the same across most of the lower trims of the Santa Cruz as well. So these are the 18 inch machine slash satin black wheels. They're wrapped in 245, 60, 18 inch Kumo Krujan HP 71 all season tires. So more road going tire, not an all terrain or anything like that. Nice pattern texture across the wheel arches with the little Santa Cruz printed on them. Body color mirror caps with LED turn signal indicators. They are going to be heated, do have blind spot detection in them. Proximity entry on both front door handles and you can see they are accented in the black color. You will find the body color door handles on the upper trims. And one thing to point out here on the side of the vehicle is that the SL activity package gives you the black cross rails that are kind of mounted up there. They do look very nice, gives it kind of an athletic look and definitely very functional as well. Coming to the back, the Santa Cruz is going to be stamped in the tailgate, of course. These are going to be incandescent taillights with incandescent turn signals, and the reverse lights will found lower on the bumper. Integrated side step for getting inside the bed. Nice gloss black trim around the license plate lights here. Backup camera is located up near the tailgate handle. It is an ele electronic release. H-Track badge, because this one is all-wheel drive. You can start getting the Santa Cruz and front wheel drive options for both the SC and SEL trims for 2023. So that is a new addition. And once again, the SEL activity package gives you the built in tonneau cover. So this is the cheapest way to get this built in tonneau cover on the Santa Cruz. It also gives you the manual sliding rear glass that we'll take a look at when we get into the back seat. Now I do want to take a look at the window sticker so I can show you exactly everything that is included in this package because like I said, I think it is a very popular trim and one that people would like to opt for. So as far as the activity package goes on this trim, it includes the power sunroof, the integrated tonneau cover, the adjustable C-channel cleat rail system, roof side rails, 115 volt AC power inverter in the right side of the bed, the 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster, wireless device charging, 
LED interior lighting and bed lighting, as well as the rear sliding glass. Now this one also has a few additional accessories, including the cargo package, the carpeted floor mats, the mud guards, and the cross rails mounted to those roof side rails up top, which brings the total MSRP to $34,720, including destination. So stepping inside the Santa Cruz SEL Activity, once again, this has the jet black cloth interior. It's going to be very similar to the SEL trim as this package kind of just builds upon that. But starting out here on the door panel, you do have hard touch uppers, nice gloss black accents that run across the top, kind of a textured plastic rubberized material in the center, nicely padded armrest, power windows, mirrors, and locks with automatic up down front driver as well as the passenger, chrome door handle pull, and some additional storage lower in the door. Coming to the driver's seat, this is your power driver's seat with two-way power lumbar. And once again, this is the typical seat found in the Santa Cruz and very similar, if not the same as the Tucson. So you have a little bit of accent uh, kind of pattern in the middle there, but overall a pretty basic black cloth seat. So go ahead and step inside and start it up. So immediately we're greeted to the 10.25 inch digital instrument cluster, the same one found in many Hyundai models these days. It can be controlled on the right side of the steering wheel using this toggle as well as the menu button. So it displays a lot of your safety systems, obviously your odometer, MPG information, trip information, all the typical stuff. You can control some of the vehicle settings in here as well. So very handy display, very nice. Steering wheel is going to be a basic urethane type. It's not leather wrapped or anything like that. It does have some of that same kind of satin chrome trim along the bottom. On the left side, it features your infotainment controls. On the right side, you have your safety systems and lane following assist. This does not have smart cruise control, but it does have lane following assist, lane keeping assist, the automatic emergency braking, stuff like that. To the left side of the steering wheel, you do have your gauge illumination, your bed lighting, as well as your traction control off. This vehicle does feature automatic headlights with auto high beam assist and your manual wipers on the right side. Moving over to the infotainment system, this is the base eight inch infotainment found in the Santa Cruz. However, the SEL package does add Blue Link as well as Sirius XM radio over the base SE trim level, which I do have a video on here in the channel. So that's a nice benefit of stepping up to the SEL and then it follows through to the SEL activity as well. So with this infotainment and trim in specific, you do get partial uh, physical and partially digital controls. So you have the volume and tune knobs on the right, as well as all of your touch screen and touch buttons above those. This does feature wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, which is one of the big reasons why people prefer the eight inch screen. Again, I wish that would come to the 10.25 as well. But like I said, this one has blue links since it is based on the SEL. Bunch of easy to use, easy to navigate systems and menus. Once again, FM, AM, Bluetooth, Sirius XM, USB inputs. So most of the traditional inputs there. Below that, you will find a single zone manual climate control with two physical knobs and a bunch of physical buttons as well. Two USB ports down below, one charge only, one data. You have a wireless phone charging pad down here. This is a 15 watt charging pad, which is a nice upgrade. It is considered quick charging. So if you have a phone that will accept 15 or more watts of wireless charging, that will provide it. 12 volt outlet. Center console features the traditional shifter here. And behind that, you will find your all wheel drive center differential lock. So this will distribute power 50, 50 front and rear auto hold, electronic parking brake. You can pull up the rear camera if you would like. Hill descent control. And then of course your drive modes. This particular one has snow, smart, sport, and normal drive modes. And that does change the digital cluster. So that is a nice feature for sure. Heated front seats are found on the base SEL and up. Nicely padded kind of rubberized texture armrest. Good amount of storage inside, no ports or lighting in there. Moving up top, you have a black headliner with vanity lighting, manual dimming, rear view mirror, blue link SOS, some LED interior lighting, again, as part of that activity package, and your sunroof controls. So this does have the traditional kind of single sunroof. It is a nice feature that I would probably opt for on this particular vehicle. And it does work again with the cross rails, even though that they are mounted up there. 
the sunroof will function with those rails mounted. So yeah, that is the front seat of the Santa Cruz SL Activity. Let's go ahead and jump in the back seat. Now, one of my smaller complaints on this vehicle is that the materials do not follow through to the rear doors, I think unless you get the limited trim. So this is going to be a completely hard touch rear door panel. So not even a padded armrest or anything like that. The cup holders on each door are located here instead of the center armrest because there is not one. Both seats do flip up with the pull of this pull tab right there. You can see there is a good amount of under seat storage. And then the cloth is going to be the same material as the front. There's a look at the front seat. No AC vents or USB charging outlets. You do have to step up to the higher trims to get those. Once again, you do have LED lighting here in the center of the roof. No center armrest, like I mentioned, but this is three person seating, so you can fit three people across if you need to in a pinch. Again, I would not recommend it for comfort reasons on a daily basis. Mat pockets on both of the front seats. And once again, as part of the activity, you do get the rear sliding window. So you can open that for a little bit of extra ventilation. It is a nice feature and one that I do like on the Santa Cruz. And this glass is going to be heated, of course. So yeah, that is the back seat of the Santa Cruz. If you guys are curious about how the Santa Cruz compares to um, other Hyundai models like the Tucson, I do have a separate video here on the channel. So make sure to check that out if you want to see kind of the interior volume and stuff like that. But moving to the bed, we have the electronic release tailgate. This does have the soft open feature. So that is nice. And then once again, it does have the built-in tonneau cover, which kind of automatically retracts just like that. And this one does have the bed mat as the accessory once again. So you have LED lighting here in the back of the bed as part of this package. And you also have the 115 volt wall outlet here on the right side behind that little plug. Handy feature for sure. I think that is a 400 watt outlet if you're curious. And of course all Santa Cruz's will have the built-in storage underneath the bed. It does have a built-in drain plug. So if you wanna put ice or any tailgating beverages in there, you can go ahead and drain that out after it melts. Very handy feature, again, similar to other vehicles such as the Honda Ridgeline. So yeah, this is a four foot bed once again. It obviously is going to be longer if you have the tailgate down like this. And you can move up these cables up to a higher position. So if you have a four by eight sheet of plywood or drywall or anything like that, you can set them above the wheel arches. This will sit up at a slight angle like that and provide additional support. So it will hang off about two or two and a half feet uh, from the back of the vehicle. But it is nice that you can fit that stuff inside of the rear bed. And if you wanna close this up, It'll lock a place just like that. It does have good weather seals, although this is not waterproof. It is water resistant. And close it up just like that. And it is lockable on the underside. So that is a nice feature of this tonneau cover. So coming to the passenger front seat, materials are going to be the same over here. Four-way manual passenger seat, so no height adjustment. Glove box is damped. No LED lighting in there. There's a look at the dashboard. Once again, you can see that little textured rubberized material right here with the vents. I do like the dash of the Tucson as well as the Santa Cruz. I think it has a unique design language. Uh, but yeah, that is the interior of the SCL activity package. Let's go ahead and take a look under the hood, see what powers it, and then wrap up this video. So under the hood, you'll find the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated four cylinder engine paired to an eight speed torque converted automatic. This puts out 191 horsepower and 181 pound feet of torque through either the front wheels or all four wheels if you option all wheel drive. Now many people do opt for this powertrain because they do not want the eight speed dual clutch transmission that comes with the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine in the Knight SEL Premium as well as the limited trim level. So once again, this is the highest trim you can get the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter four cylinder with. And that is why I think this is somewhat of a popular choice among people, again, who don't want the dual clutch transmission. So that's gonna do it for this video on the 2023 Hyundai Santa Cruz SEL with activity package. Let me know what you think of this trim level down in the comment section below. Personally, like I've mentioned many times in this video, I think it is popular due to the equipment that it offers, along with being the highest trim you can get the 2.5 liter naturally aspirated engine with the eight speed torque converted automatic.
I think this is a good trim level and price point for many people in the Santa Cruz lineup. If you want some of the more basic infotainment, you know, manual climate controls, obviously you're not going to get smart cruise control and highway driving assist functionality like you would in the Limited or the SEL Premium for 2023, but you still get the digital instrument cluster, which is a nice tech feature. You still get a lot of the nice creature comforts like heated front seats, power driver seat, remote start on the key fob, as well as the Blue Link app and a lot of the stuff in the bed as well. So if you currently own a Santa Cruz or are interested in purchasing one, make sure you leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the vehicle, how reliable has it been, which trim did you purchase and why. I'd love to hear all that information and it might help anybody out that might be searching for a Santa Cruz and trying to decide which particular trim they wanna purchase. So once again, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and as always, hope to see you guys in the next one.